All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Anahana, Anahana episode four. four. And oh, we've my got God. multiple Menmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone is seeing Menma so far. The uh, the kind of the ones that have brought it up, they seem to have uh, seen more, though, not necessarily Jinta's Menma. Though. Right. We got the one that Popo saw, mm -hmm. and then the one that Yukiatsu apparently also said sees. that he saw. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Yukiatsu is the one that I would have believed before we saw Popo see uh-huh menma but the fact that he is bringing it up so casually yeah i wonder if this is something that is more uh kind of tying to what suruko has been kind of really overtly hinting at being a problem with yukiyatsu mm. like he's not um uh, able to uh kind of stay let healthy go. let yeah. go yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah. We'll see about that. Um, but but the crew is together. Right. The Goonies are mm -hmm. are all with each other. Yep. It's it's their time now, right. you know? Even if they aren't necessarily all on friendly terms, they are mm. all in the same spot and they're talking and talking about the situation. Right. However, because of the recent developments, they're already going on their little now ghost adventure right which leads to them splitting up which means that it's not Maybe necessarily more one on one well. conversation well, well right but um, i could see it also being a thing of where it's like yeah you're not actually really together yet like oh, i love the sure. awkwardness of them all bringing like kind of not really helpful things uh -huh. to the to the little you know fire pit barbecue kind of yeah. thing and um yeah. Hey, Yuki Yatsu brought some brought some good stuff though. That is true. He is the the responsible boy that, you know, mm. thinks about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, responsible boy just somehow just doesn't feel right with what Sudoku mm. has been mm. saying about him though. You know? Well, yeah. Mm. Yeah. All Maybe right. we'll get into into it this episode. Yeah, for sure. But y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. This is gonna be really good for Virginia because uh if uh, he doesn't feel alone in all this, that can definitely be uh, something helpful there. Now, she's looking at him at all knowing, like... Like, uh -huh. like that was practically like the cosmos there of like... Gee, yeah. like mm. Is that the... Uh, uh, is that the look of... Why are you lying to him in order to make him feel better? Or is it the look of, are you, uh, are you going to be good? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 you're on thin ice, buddy. Careful. Uh, yeah, that is one of the things I really like about the dynamic between Sudoku and Yukiatsu. They have the, or at least Sudoku has a very close read on Yukiatsu's state, you know? Which, for most of the other characters, they are kind of kind clueless. Of, yeah, kind of clueless and in suffering alone. Yeah. Even though Yukiatsu hasn't really been, like, you know, sharing his, whatever troubles he's having with Sudoku. Right. Right. One of the things that you'll notice a lot of the time, uh, Yukiatsu and Sudoku actually usually have the same... Like kind of expression on their face a lot of the time. Hmm. It's kind of a couples thing, you know. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay. You or your friends. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. There's a wall there. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Ouch. 
優しくしてやってよくわかんないけど、まあ、お願いレイヤーズ。いや、there are there are very much layers there because one there's them talking about each other but、right. then they use menma as the midi mediate yeah intermediary the medium, <laughs> the medium if you will oh sure yeah get it kids what are you my story to throw it in there lazing around yeah <laughs> cooking your food yeah popo where's your gratefulness come on They all had a different expression regarding that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's the wish right there. That is. Oh. I mean, he knew this would happen. Oh, 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 shoot. Yeah, that's.、Uh, oh, oh, dang. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You are? Mm. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that was、yep. painful. Mm hmm. <laughs> God, I don't know if he was punning there, but wow. Mmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmm
Yes, you you definitely have agenda to do, I mean stuff to do. Wow. Oh. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Oh, you genius. Uh-huh. Ha ha ha. Gotcha. <laughs> そんなブラブラで歩いてていいのか。俺のメンバーがさ。あっと、間違い。オレンジにいるメンバーがさ。お前が見たメンバーのことを偽物だ。おお、オッケー。いや、いや、いや、いや。何調子に乗ってんだ
All right. Okay, I love this show so much. Isn't it wonderful? This show Isn't is it fantastic. Wonderful? Oh. This, this show does an amazing job with its characters. Mm -hmm. And I love how much they're giving all this agency to the cast as a whole so that when they move and do things and there's like this there's like this um there's like this dance of like a circle. You know when okay. you have people all holding hands Mm -hmm. And then one person starts to pull and then the circle stretches and weaves and stuff like that. Yeah. But you have someone that starts to, for whatever reason, starts to twist the arms of others there. That's okay. what I feel like Yukiatsu is doing. Yeah. They're trying to basically be like, let's keep the circle going. And he's like, no, let me go. Let me. Right. Like yeah. they're locked in their arms like this. Uh -huh. So what he does is he uses his strength to go, let go. Like, let yeah. go. Let me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Suruko, freaking Suruko is like, nope. Nope, I know it hurts. I know it hurts, but I'm not letting you go. And oh my god, I love I love what they're doing with mm -hmm. the characters here because you can you can really see and I, I gotta just basically shout out Suruko this whole episode. There were multiple moments where you could see that she was kind of like already in. She was already in. And what it was was I think once once Yukiatsu kind of pushed a little bit too hard. Mm -hmm. And he kind of did the whole, don't make a right. ruckus anymore. Menma said that. Uh -huh. Suruko has this look of like, oh, oh you like, poor boy. Like, like well, because, uh, okay, what I think mm -hmm. this is, is that Suruko knows. Like, she she's yeah. known in some ways all this time, but right. maybe she didn't have definitive proof. But what mm -hmm. she's upset about here, maybe, is that he's then trying to use his trauma mm -hmm. as a weapon to dismantle what they're starting to build back mm -hmm. up again. Right. And she's like, no, 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 no. She's like, yeah. I am okay if you're going to suffer alone and you won't let me help you. That's fine. Well, but she's not even okay with no, that. No, 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 yeah. no. I'm yeah. aware. Yeah. But I'm talking about the difference between mm -hmm. where she's like, if you won't let me help you, then I can't, I can't help do anything you. about that. Right. right. But yeah. if you're going to actively then, mm -hmm. you know, use that to fragment this group here, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to take I'm a little bit more in. executive yeah. action. Right. And then we start to see her from then point on going mm -hmm. and like yep. actively like solving this whole thing. And I, I I love it because she's the one that should do it in terms of the story, because no one else knows exactly what's going on with in Yukiatsu said except Yukiatsu. And right. then by a small percentage, um uh um Suruko? Suruko, yeah. yeah. And then Suruko immediately goes to Popo and is like, okay, so uh, what what did men, what did the Menma right, right. that you saw look like? And mm -hmm. then she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So now I've got it confirmed that it is him. Right. Then we go and she visits <sighs> uh, uh, Yadomi, as, as she calls him, or, mm -hmm. or Jinta, as, as we, we call him. Yep. And basically goes and says, okay, I need you to be um, a mediator here so that we can get a... Uh, a thing here. Also, I gotta say, what's what's wonderful about how she enters here mm -hmm. is you can hear her um, her nervousness and a little bit of the like. She's not as good socially necessarily as someone like um, sure Anaru, for instance, or something yeah. like that. So she kind of just talks about, hey, I've got an acapella, you know, yeah. cultural festival thing, right. yeah, you know, karaoke cafe. Deflection. Here's Doesn't the reason why I'm here, and he's yeah. just like. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Will well, you let me in? It's kind of the thing of like, I need your help, but right. I can't. I can't, I can't just come out and say, say that because uh -huh. you yeah. might just say no. So right. then she keeps him basically on his back foot by asking questions because, mm -hmm. in some ways, she knows that this is something where she is needing. She is needing his help, and he could just say no. Right, and she doesn't know that he's gonna say no. So she then talks about the the cooking stuff to kind of mm -hmm. warm him up a little bit that she's okay with talking about this stuff yeah and she's ending up revealing a little bit more about her character she talks about the recipe stuff like the things you were commenting which is like yes absolutely oh my god and then then yeah yeah i so busting the false sense of peace mm -hmm. right oh, Sunko, I love it. like because as a character she is one, the most withdrawn of all the characters as far as like, you know, we, mm -hmm. we don't have a really close perspective on her and like, you know, her internal thoughts and things like that. And 
Um, uh, right. Yeah. And and that and it, especially in a short show, yeah. that can make it hard to characterize them because mm-hmm. you you don't have as much glaringly obvious things to go on for yep. who this person is, right? Yep. How they're dealing with this whole situation, things like that. But well, that's why I love the fact that Yukiatsu and Sudako, you know, were hanging out and everything because it's. It's by having there be a character that Sudako deeply cares about, in addition to all the trauma from Menma dying and everything, right? Mm-hmm. That's something where then it gives her the proper motivation in order to in order for her to overcome her own tendencies and proclivities to not be as, you know, like open about things. Like like yeah. the fact that even even in the way that she intervened here. It was a very, like you were saying, subtle way, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't overt. It was very well done, but still something where it's just sort of, I'm here, I'm doing my thing. And then at the end, it's the Yukiatsu, you know, come on out. Like, and (sighs) yeah, what, what she did here and what I love about this whole thing here is that there's a little bit of a cut between when... Um, uh, Yukiatsu is saying, you know, Menma come out, we're going to show him. Mm-hmm. Um, what's really cool here is then, um, I want to make sure this is right. Um, uh, Suruko says, you didn't have to come. Y- right, you realize, Naru. Well, right, right. But do you realize that's Suruko set this up? Mm-hmm. Suruko's thinking ahead and going, I want everyone to be here to see this. I want him to have this group of friends that are then going to be all together ready to accept him when he basically mm-hmm. reveals that, yeah, 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 he's got all kinds of ways that uh, he's right. been trying to mm-hmm. solve this, or not really solve this, but cope with this. Right. And it's not working for him. It, so oh. she's like, I invited basically the group, mm-hmm. but... You know, she can tell that, you know, and that is having a little bit of discomfort with maybe bug bites or something like that. So she's like, hey, you didn't you didn't have to come. It's kind of a thing of like it's not that she doesn't like her necessarily. They have mm-hmm. a little bit of yeah. you know, a little bit of tense you know, uh-huh. stuff at points. But I, I just love then that, uh, you know, we've got everyone here and she's even doing little things like I brought the, the coffee maker is mm-hmm. the old one there. So yep. she's like, I want permanency here. I want there to be like this to be a consistent right. thing. Because one of the things that I that I love about this whole dynamic between Yukiatsu and Suruko, mm-hmm. like Yukiatsu asked Suruko to go with him when he bought the dress and the and the scrunchies and, you know, all that stuff mm-hmm. for his Menma outfit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like he knows that she's smart. She's right there seeing him do this stuff. It's like, oh, I I think he doesn't. I don't think he's fully aware of some of the things he's doing at times. Well, uh, sure. Like how it looks. Right. Right. Yeah. But there's like on the subconscious level, that's where I like to get into it because because this is it is a cry for help then. Yeah, it can it can be a cry for help. It can be so many things. But then at the same time, it's something where because of his own pride and, and, and whatnot, he is not able to actually ask, truly ask for help or even right. really accept help, even though she's right there being like, come on, you know, like, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I see what's happening. Like, I'm not an idiot. Right. right? In some ways, I'm, I kind of am upset that I didn't see that at that point there it's because a, they didn't show you actually the outfit at yep. that point. Mm-hmm. Which it's is, a lot. Which is smart to basically be like, wait, then who is he or what is he buying this for? You mm-hmm. know, right? What, and what you don't know reason? if they're dating or not. And then the you know, and then the clerk comes up and it's but like, she's oh, like, it's okay. not for me, right? So uh-huh. she knows at that point. Yeah, right. I think it's more of the thing of where she sees it, but she hadn't seen him wear it necessarily. Right. So when he then. Uh, Popo sees, sees a- Menma. Menma, a.k.a. Uh-huh. Yukiatsu. Right, she's like, oh. She's like, oh, was it this outfit specifically? And then mm-hmm. she's like, oh, I-, I figured it out. Yeah. That's a really cool way to set things up in a lot of ways with regards to how you progress the story rather quickly mm-hmm. is you drop a thing that's a very obvious foreshadowing right, in hindsight. Uh-huh. of it. But I would say almost in terms of not even – like in hindsight as well, like at the moment, if you're looking into it because of the way she goes, it's not for me. You go, then well, wait, well, well, then who is it for? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. in that respect, it could be a thing of where, like, I think, 
I think what I would have thought if I was looking a little bit more closely at the time is he's making his own kind of shrine to Menma. Sure. Is that it's some kind of memorial of sorts where he'll like mm-hmm. put up, you know, an outfit of hers, you know, a couple right. things that remind him of her, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. And then he like, you know, prays to it or has like little moments of, you know, kind of giving reverence in some ways to mm-hmm. remember her. Yeah. And it'd be like, oh, that would be actually a That'd be a relatively healthy way, I would say, of handling this here. And and that's probably what Sudoku figured it was. Sure. Until there's the, oh, Popo saw Menma, and she's like, wait. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, mm-hmm. And you still won't talk to me about this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I like how Sudoku is in some ways a little bit um, manipulative with this. Oh, because uh-huh. in some ways she is forcing the situation to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I don't know if she invited literally everyone. Like Popo, I don't know if he stumbled in here because he saw like the lights or something, or he just constantly visits here. Well, Popo's just been staying here. Oh, he's been literally living here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. In in between, he, he's been living here and then doing oh. part-time jobs and then traveling. And then when he's not traveling, he comes back here. Does right, more. hence all the stuff in the right. place before that. Yeah, yeah, I get, I get that. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was a thing where he was staying there just for a like, oh, I'm gonna be here just kind camp of out or camp out like kind of mm-hmm. thing for like a couple nights or something. But I guess, oh, he's staying, staying here. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I'm really curious to know where the property of this is. If it's like in a, like, how who knows? This, how does it, you know, it's not important to the yeah. plot, I guess. But um, okay, Yukiatsu, mm-hmm. Zen. An outfit, uh-huh. wig, yep. and everything, mm-hmm. and everyone's seen him now. Right. Cat's and, out of the bag. And, yeah. I'd say if I was him, mm-hmm. initial feeling is supreme embarrassment. And when I say I embarrassment, I, embarrassment, I would say the kind of embarrassment that goes into extreme shame. Mm-hmm. Extreme shame. Because it's not that he necessarily cares really as much about how all of them you know, think of him, mm-hmm. but there might be one or two of them where he's like, "Yeah, why did it have to be you?" Right, like, because because he's been doing such a good job of being the the perfect student, the perfect young kid. You know, right. that goes he's to a good care school. Of his health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's 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 still in high yeah. school. On he's the outside, going on jogs and like listening to probably like you know, yeah, something something helpful or educational. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's, right, he's doing all the outside. Mm-hmm. surface things really well right but and then the when inside we, when we you know when we dig a down a mess. little bit and yeah. sudoku didn't have to do much in order to mm-hmm. set up this situation to happen which is i, I just freaking love sudoku mm-hmm. the fact that this happened yep we now have to have some kind of a resolution here mm-hmm. now right. yukiatsu could just run away again and i would say that's very that makes a lot of sense and he could just never show his face again this is the part where in a lot of ways Either Yukiatsu then shuts down because he's been found out in this regard, and it, it's so embarrassing to him that he basically becomes a lot like Jinta, and he just hides in his room, basically. That would suck. One, because we've seen that in some ways Jinta wouldn't have ever left if not for Menma showing up. Uh-huh. Yep. So in that regard, that's not good at all, but also... um. This is one where uh, Yukiatsu, having projected so much out, he's mm-hmm. actually given the group a lot of fuel and a lot of um, specific insight into why he's done this. Right. He is now fully vulnerable Yeah, in a way that he was not prepared for and didn't want Ex- to be. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So he could also get completely sapped of all of his will to resist in some ways and just... And just kind of collapse, just like, I mean... Like, I mean, he has physically collapsed at this point. You know? Right, I think that's yeah. already the first sign of it, is that they're going to have a conversation. He's not going to have the will or the strength to even run away from this. So at what point of this will he end up getting some kind of fire of, even if it's just resisting and, and lashing back? I, oh, I, I, am, I am not ready for this. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that I can kind of relate to in this situation here in regards to how when you see someone else in an area of suffering, mm-hmm. you can end up running into kind of no win scenarios where 
you know that if you do a specific thing, it can force a conversation, but they not they might not want that conversation. So who are you to make that happen mm -hmm. in that regard? Now, Yukiatsu didn't have to show up here. Sudoku mm -hmm. only basically banked on nah, he's he's going to. Right. He's he, going to. Because he was here before. He's uh -huh. gonna do this again. Yep. And he's exactly. gonna try and he's gonna try and use the situation in right. some ways. Maybe he's been actually learning how to voice act. Like straight up in his in his to ear talk thing like, or something like to get that. As, as much similarity to yeah. the past as it possible. It could be a combination of actually recorded audio of her talking and he's just been practicing talking like her i mean they probably don't really have recorded audio no 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 no. i know mm. but but mm -hmm. you never know as kids he, he sure. might have had a weird hobby who uh -huh. knows yeah or, yeah they have some tape of them all goofing off or something like that yeah, yeah or it's literally just like like that's just a dumb theory i have of like uh -huh. he could be learning how to talk like a young girl right well you're right because it's because he's not just dressing up like her he is also coming to the actual physical place where they spent the most time together yep that's one a huge risk because people could see him right right and even after someone saw him the one time yep he still came back right yeah but it's also something where it's and and the reason probably is just because of that extra association right because he's thinking True. maybe this will help me cope a little bit better right yeah and if he's putting on also apparently it's not yeah and if he's also putting on the persona of menma in a lot of ways he would actually feel some potentially even a kinship a little bit of a uh a warmth from being in this place sure one of the things that um, everything's okay now i'm back in the place where mm -hmm. it was happy times yeah yeah exactly so i don't know what kind of disassociation is going on there but um i uh i i I can't, I can't be upset at any of these characters. This is one of the things that um, I think is, is, is really tough to describe in the show. Mm -hmm. But I think if you've ever experienced the kind of trauma where someone has suffered or lost or died or, um, or at the very least changed so dramatically that you end up feeling like you you lost a connection with someone that you really cared about, like some at some point, mm -hmm. even if it wasn't a permanent terminal aspect of it. If you understand that, I feel like the the um, potential things that you could see as melodrama uh -huh. in this show all 100% makes sense. It it just it all just clicks together perfectly. Right, because the whole. The whole problem with melodrama is when there isn't there isn't that emotional reason for the sort of yeah. odd yeah. You, you things can't that believe, the characters are doing. Yeah, right. you, you can't believe basically the motivation or reason why a character right. did X, Y, Z. Right. It feels because like the plot pushed them into conflict exactly. for the sake of the con of the of the of the plot. Right. Because humans yeah. do weird things all the time. Exactly. Right? Because we're emotional creatures, yeah. right? So if you sell the emotions to the audience, mm -hmm. then all the weird things that the characters do, all the all the ways that they try and deal with this emotional turmoil that they have, yep. then suddenly it makes sense, right? Yeah. And I could see a, a lot of people watching this and not getting necessarily the message of the emotion regarding things because for some of the characters, I would say it's extremely subtle. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's I am not really over the top, and I think mm -hmm. that that's that's more of a thing towards the maturity of the show. I've watched many shows where they are trying to make you cry. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get it's you like that, trying that, too hard that, that feeling thing. Yeah, and it, you can feel the plot being like, hey, cry, cry, yeah, yeah. audience. It's almost like a laugh track, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. And yeah. and this hasn't had that, I think, more than once, if anything. And that's one of the reasons I love this show so much. It's so impressive. Because this is all the aftermath of the traditional thing that would be where you would cry, right? That right. would be at the end of the show. No, exactly. no, no, no. We're already there. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with there. it now. Yeah, like, yeah and, exactly. And, and, and I, I am so glad that you've been reading into all the pseudocoast stuff so 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 much because uh, because Sudoku is the one like is the one alongside Popo I feel like that is so easy to miss what's going on with them yeah you know because of the way they deal with it right yeah. because because with Sudoku yeah like very subtle like the 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 whole thing of having having Jinta go and you know interrupt Yukiatsu on his walk like uh -huh. that's about as unsubtle as she got Yep. You know, other than the yep. eventual confrontation and calling out his name. Yeah. So I, I feel like Suruko is the one I actually relate to the most in all oh, yeah. of the all the show. I think what it is is um 
Sudoku says a lot of things that um, are, I would say, defensive statements. She is not a projector like Yukiyatsu. One sure. of the things that I feel like okay. I'm recontextualizing a little bit now is that if anything, she's maybe a little bit worried of becoming Yukiyatsu. And oh. she's maybe clinging a little bit close to him in order to make sure that she can save him. At the very least, that she can end up writing his course, the course of his ship. Because I don't know what their relationship is, but I can feel that little bit of her that's like, hey, hey, hey. Like, I, uh -huh. I, I, I need deep you. Deep care. Right, deep care, mm -hmm. but she doesn't know how to express it. So right. she ends up doing things that are ultimately actually pushing other people away. And her main problem is like a couple of the other characters' problems. In fact, I'd say it's all their They all have the same problem. They all don't know how to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Right. That's super easy to relate to, yep. I would say, because we've all been there. But I feel like Sudoku is the most capable in terms of being sure. able to logically and, mm -hmm. like the way she did this here, ask for help and get the help right. without actually asking for help, which is cheating the system, Sudoku. That's why I really love the fact that she was manipulative here with this. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that, you're basically saying, I want the result without the connection. Yeah, it's it's doing this. Yep. Uh -huh. It's really, they yeah. don't even realize it yet. I don't right. think they realize Cause, it. Because they're kids. Like, this yeah. is another one of those well, things. They're all kids, I mean, they're, but they're all also kind of young adults right, in right. that they're, regard, too. Yes, right. It's, it's trauma that came from when they were very young kids. Exactly. And now they're starting to move into the next they're chapter of their up, lives. Yeah. They're growing up and mm -hmm. and this still and this still hasn't really been dealt with. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I I again love this show with the setting and everything because mm -hmm. so often the idea of the age of the characters, you know, <sighs> like being young and all that stuff, because that'll, you know, it's that perfect <sighs> sweet spot of relate rate of relatability and everything, you know. Yeah. That's done sort of casually. But sure. there isn't like it doesn't feel like there's a deeper reason for why the characters are this particular age, right? But mm, with this show, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We got some good stuff with Anaru and uh, Jinta actually mm -hmm. being able to talk a little bit, and I love how quickly things shifted into um, the past, right? And then Don't Jinta, slip. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then Jinta ended up thinking about afterwards, like, oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, he clued in, and I'm actually just glad that they're having this be a thing where the main character actually realizes that the mm -hmm. person who has a crush on him has a crush on him. And, and like, it's are we, God forbid, in an anime about mm -hmm. high schoolers actually gonna talk about crushes? Right. Yeah. I know. Right. In an open way, could that actually happen? Again, like I, so one of the other things I love about mm. this is that yes he's realizing it early on in the show as far as the percentage of the show for episode uh, four right. out of 11 yeah. right that's early on yeah but at the same time you have that wonderful pain of the fact that it's already too late it is right it because is. she's gone yeah and he never he never would have expected right when when he was confronted with that of hey Jinta do you like Menma mm -hmm. he never would have expected that that would have been his last time that he saw her mm -hmm. but you know what it was yeah yeah. Too late. Too late. Like that's uh like as far as things that that like cuz I love it when stories have elements in them that feel like it comes out of the story and it's things that I could apply in my own life. Mm, okay. Yeah. And the idea that these kids and these young these young adults, you know, have been taught a very harsh lesson in you never know how much time you have. Yeah. Right? Mhm. Mm I <sighs> Yeah, it's good. Like that's the kind of thing that I want to make sure that I never forget, right? That yeah. that anytime you're with someone and and you want to say something and you want to say something to them, right? Yeah. You know, like it comes from your heart. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Like like yeah, because yeah, just say it awkwardly, badly, and exactly work because it, out. it because it could be the last time you see them. You never yeah. know, and not necessarily because you know yeah, not they because die it has anything. to be the last time you see them in terms right. of something there. It just it might be. A thing that you never end up saying. Right. Exactly. It doesn't have to be that yep. you yep. don't end up doing that. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Then um, with Yukiatsu being un unveiled here, right. um, who's going to take charge here? 
Well, I'm is guessing... Yatsu going to just fight back, or is this going to be something where Suruko will take charge? She kind of did with the well, calling him out, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's but different. This next that's stage. different. That's her basically just saying, like, mm -hmm. hey... I'm I know right and now this is going to happen but mm -hmm. that's not necessarily her taking charge that's her basically playing her trump card she's got her she's mm -hmm. got her thing in her pocket that she's always held on to but now he's in the position where he can't just deflect away from it right. he has to run away and uh, and then of course yeah unfortunately for him the the wig got caught in a tree mm -hmm. branch which is classic but yep. also just a thing of where it's it's the perfect way to have there be no question mm -hmm. and then everyone sees and and the fact that he hadn't ran away even though there was a little bit of time where he could have kept going with the mm -hmm. wig still on the ground yeah maybe it was a cry for help jacob maybe maybe in some ways it was a thing of where he's like no i give up well i and just i just i just would rather have this all be over and just mm -hmm. let's talk it out and i hope that doesn't go into the darker places of it all being over, though. Well, what I love about this mm -hmm. is it's something where Yukiatsu, all of them, have had to deal with something that they never should have had to deal with, right? And the fact that this is how Yukiatsu copes, there doesn't have to be anything wrong with that, necessarily. There's a time and a place for everything. Totally. But you need to acknowledge to yourself that you're coping this way. And yeah, that that's well, a place that you're in. Right. Because I feel like in the same way that he projects with saying, you know, you're you're pathetic and all that stuff, it's the the things that he does, the the rigorous system that he has set up in place so that on the outside he looks like he's got everything together yeah. is also to kind of tell himself that he's got everything together because he realizes I I, I don't know, I'm I'm scared. You know, there's 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 all of these things sure. wrapped up in it. And and the fact that he does this in the dark, the fact that he does this and doesn't tell Sudoku or anything like that, it almost seems like he won't acknowledge to himself that this is something I need right now. Oh, of course, because he doesn't see it as him doing it. He sees this as Menma coming out. Of uh, right, that's the thing. There's yeah. there's potential disassociation yeah, right. involved. And and by and by, Sudoku saying Yukiatsu, you know. Yeah, it, it's it, it's it like snapped him out of it's it. It's like th this is you. Right, it right. woke you up. Yeah, it's like so. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and then and then from there, then maybe we can make some progress, right? Yep. Then if you if you oh. realize that you need help, that you know that mm. that this is a place that you don't want to be in anymore, or or, or whatever, then awesome. Oh, but man. acknowledge that first, you know. Yeah, that self honesty. I just so. Oh man. Yeah, I love this show. It's a really good show. But y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us and the community there about this show, about anime in general. And you can also talk with Jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote. Yep. Wrote a sci-fi novel called Battle Lines. It's got a group of six friends that all have things that they have to deal with together and whatnot. Um, if you want to check it out, it's on Amazon. The link is in the description down below. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.